Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's session on budgeting and or managing a budget in times of crisis. I will be your moderator today. My name is Josh Antis, and uh, we thank you for joining us. Uh, a few things to point out before we get started. Please check out the handout section on the webinar uh, toolbar so that you can take a look at some of the great information we have available for you. Uh, one of the handouts is an evaluation form. Please feel free to fill that out. Uh, on your computer or, or uh, desktop uh, or phone or wherever you may be uh, viewing this webinar today. And you can send that back to me. I will put my email address in the chat box. We appreciate your feedback and we love to learn how we can improve as we go. So we value that feedback and we appreciate you sending that, over, sending that to us. And I also wanted to mention that um, the uh, audio lines will be muted during the session, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box and um, we will go ahead and answer those uh, as we go if we can or towards the end of the webinar. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our certified financial coach, Carolyn Rose, and uh, she'll take us through managing our budget in times of crisis. Carolyn, take it away. Thank you so much, Joshua. Thank you everybody for joining us today. So there has been a lot going on in the past couple of months, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of businesses closed, a lot of reduced income, a lot of no income. There have been a lot of things going on that can affect your budget. And we were looking for some ideas, ways that we can help our community, our members to deal with this financial crisis. So we came up with this idea, this managing your budget in times of crisis. We're gonna go over some ideas of how we can uh, get your income in order so we can get through this to going back to whatever the new normal is gonna look like. So we got this financial crisis management, research, prioritize, communicate, um, set up your plan. We're going to go over each of these sections and give you some ideas of how you can manage your income, your expenses, and what you have and make it last as long as you can. So we're going to talk today first about, um, we have this poll that's been launched, like if you have been struggling with them, it's kind of, there's four different answers. Have you struggled with income? Have you struggled with your finance? Are you having trouble paying your bills? Just take a quick moment to answer that poll. We'll go over those answers in just a moment. And then we'll move on to the next step, which is talking about researching and going over the income section part of it, which there are a lot of ways we can stretch that income that you have. So just take a few moments, answer that poll if you haven't already, and then we'll close it and share what is up with the community that we are have coming in today. A moment for that. So a little background while we're answering that poll. My name is Terrilyn Rose. I'm a financial fitness coach with California Coast. I've been providing the service since 2008. Um, I was the first client. For people who have gone through my workshops before, I owed $46,000 in credit card debt, never knew how to manage my money. So what we when we started going through this service, I was the first coach and I was also the first client. So I have gone through a lot of these steps myself. Um, I've been through a lot of these financial crises. I've lost my job um, and had no income and had to figure out a way to struggle through. And this would have been really nice to have at the time. So uh, a few more moments to answer that poll. Great. We have the poll up there and let me get to the results. Where are the results? I poll to enable. So 19% all of the time. That's a really, oh, 15%, 28% some of the time, 38% occasionally, 80%, never worry about paying bills on time. I can say I have never been in the 18% ever. So um, we are going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. And we're going to talk about some researching. And this is going into the income section of it. So the first thing is, if you have a pay stub, if you are still getting some income, I want you to take a look look at that pay stub that you have and look at ways to increase that pay stub in some way. First thing is looking at your contributions of your 401k. Now, if for a couple of months you don't make a contribution to that, it's not going to make a big difference in your long-term retirement plan, but it could make a big difference. That 300 that $400 that you have going into your 401k, you can use that now to help pay those bills on time. If you have a 401k loan, um, there might be a possibility if you reach out to your 401k company that they might be able to 
defer that payment, maybe not make those payments right away like with any other loan, and we'll go into some more options at the end of this. Um, if you have um, any withdrawals going on, so taking a look at all the different things that are coming out of your paycheck. If you are paying for, uh, like maybe you're paying for the, uh, I'm sorry, going through, like you're looking at all the, like you're paying medical, paying dental, you gotta pay those still. But is there a way that you can do more for less? If you're paying for life insurance, can you go and research and potentially get that same life insurance for less? I was paying $15 a month for a $250,000 15-year policy. So if you research, you might be able to get more for less. I'm not saying cancel your life insurance if you've got people who are dependent on you for income. I'm saying, is there a way that you can get more for less and again, make that dollar work a little bit harder for you? If you're paying for a legal aid, is that something that you can potentially suspend for the next couple of months? Just looking at everywhere that money is coming. The other thing that I also like to look at is tax. So federal tax is one of those things that people tend to have more withheld and get a big bunch of money back at the end of the year. I look at that like going to the grocery store and estimating I'm gonna spend about $100 and I go and I put everything into my basket and I check out and I have gift cards and I've got coupons and I actually only owe $50 and I hand the cashier my $100 bill and she says, thank you very much. I'll give you that $50 change back next year. I don't think there are many of us who would go back to that grocery store because we have other things we want to spend that money on now. I want my money now. It's kind of the same thing with your federal taxes. You estimate how much you're going to owe. They withhold it out of every single paycheck. At the end of the year, you file your taxes. You've got your credits. You've got your deductions. And they give you all your change back. In the meantime, you're struggling to put food on the table or pay your rent. So if you can possibly suspend those federal tax and state tax withholdings for a little bit or make sure that you're not having too much withheld and you're not getting that four or five i had a guy get back ten thousand dollars at the end of the year in the meantime he's paying 26 percent on his credit cards and struggling to pay his bills and and not being able to move ahead so if you can change your withholdings potentially you have a little bit more money to help pay the bills that you have right now so we're looking at all those different things that are coming on so we can make that pay stub last as long as we can. Flexible spending, that's something that with the CARES Act, they've actually opened up the ability to use your flexible spending for over-the-counter. So if you need to buy band-aids or you need to buy hot and cold compresses or anything, uh, sunscreen, you can actually use your flexible spending account for that too. So that's something that make sure you're using, if you have a flexible spending account, that you're using that for as much as you possibly can so you can protect the money that you have to spend at your paycheck. So the next thing we're gonna take a look at is if you don't have any income. So this has been, there's been quite a few changes with that CARES Act that came out regarding unemployment. So a lot of people who couldn't qualify before do qualify based on the COVID-19. You may receive benefits if you or your family is unable to work because you've been diagnosed with COVID-19. Um, if you provide care for a sick person or you have to provide care for a child whose school was closed. If you are quarantined because you came in contact with someone. If you're unable to reach your job, I, I haven't been able to figure out any kind of situation where that would happen, but if you're unable to reach your job due to the COVID-19, then you can qualify. If your job was closed due to COVID-19, you qualify. If your spouse has passed away, you qualify for unemployment. Um, they are looking at normal unemployment benefits, and then you're going to get an additional $600 each week, and right now that's through July 31st. Um, normal unemployment for California, it's going to last for um, they're going to extend that to 39 weeks. So through July 31st, um, they are looking at potentially expend, ex extending that through the end of the year. So we have some options for you. Now, just letting you know that the unemployment website does say it typically takes three weeks to process with the millions of people that have been applying due to this COVID-19 loss of income. Uh, it might take a little bit longer. I have a member, it took about seven weeks for them to receive their first check. So just be aware of that, plan ahead for that, notify all of your people about that so that you can make that dollar stretch until you actually get that assistance. 
Now we're going to go, we're still in this research stage. We're still looking at everywhere the money is coming in and everywhere the money is going. Now we're going to start looking at your bills, looking at your debts, looking at your monthly expenses, and looking at how we can conserve the money that you have or reduce the expense that you have as much as possible. So looking at your utility bills, so this is your cell phone, your SDG&E, um, cell phone especially, this is one that is, if you take a look at your cell phone bill, all 25 pages of that cell phone bill and take a look at what you're paying for and is there anything that you can reduce at this moment like so i will say this so cell phone when we take a look take a look at our expenses the most important thing that any financial person is going to tell you is that we're worried about using the money that you have for the necessities right the things that you have to do to live roof over your head food on your table, and they do say clothes on your back, but I'm sure plenty of us have plenty of clothes in our closet that we don't need to worry about clothes at the moment. So we're looking at the roof over our head and the food on our table, right? So we're looking at using the money that we have for that purpose and everything else that we have really, as, as much as we feel they are absolute necessities in our lives, really, if you take a look at back 40, 50, 60 years, a lot of these things we didn't have. So there are things that we think of as necessities, like having a washer and dryer in your home, I think of as a necessity, but I could hand wash my clothes if I absolutely had to, right? So I could survive. What's the worst thing that's going to happen if you don't pay for this service right now? So that's kind of the question you're asking is, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen if I don't have a cell phone? Yeah, I can't call anybody and but I can, you know, there are other ways I can communicate. If I've got a computer, I can do that way. So I'm paying $236 for my cell phone bill. Let's take a look at that and see, okay, is there something I'm paying for? Do I have to have a tablet? Do I have to have the Apple Watch? Do I have to have unlimited? Can I go down to maybe 500 minutes for right now? Uh, anything extra that you're paying for, can I reduce that in some way? Call the cell phone companies. This is a really good time to do some research and look around at competitors and see how you can reduce that bill. We were paying about $100 a month for one company. We researched, we moved over to this other company. I'm now paying $36 a month. I have unlimited minutes. They gave me a free phone that they're paying for and they also gave me free Hulu for a year. So I got, and they also gave me $100 for having an account with a credit union. So just by doing some research, you might be able to drop that bill down and preserve that thing that we think is kind of a necessity, but really isn't. Um, looking at your internet, is there anything that you're paying for? Can we reduce the speed? Again, research the competitors, see what's out there and see if we can get that. Now cable, it's gotten me through. I have binged and watched a lot of shows, but I do have my phone that I could watch if I needed to. So do I need to pay for cable? Is that something that I can, we actually canceled our cable completely and just have a couple of apps that we're watching things on our computer, on our TV. I don't need to have cable right now. And if I'm looking at preserving that money so I can eat, watching Arrow or watching or putting food on the table, again, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen if I stop paying for it? I don't get to watch my show. There are worse things. So that's something that we can take a look at. Anything that has a due date, look at what you are paying for and look at how we can reduce it. You might be paying for five different apps. You've got Disney, you've got Netflix, you've got Hulu, you've got Spotify, you've got Apple Music, you've got all these different apps, $10 here, $15, and that's $100 a month going out the door for these apps that you have. Maybe you can suspend those for the next three, four months and be able to use that $100 to put food on the table, put the roof over your head. Now we're gonna look at debt. Hey, um, hey yes. Carolyn. Yes. Uh, real quick, I think we're having problems with the PowerPoint. Uh, do you have it up on your screen? I hate to interrupt I do. you. Perfect, thank you. All right, learning new things about the webinar every time we do this, this is our third one. So thank you for your patience while we work out the kinks. Um, so we're looking at the debts, looking at what things we can do, what's going out the door, looking at ways. Uh, the good thing with secured loans, 
I have to say I am so proud of California Coast Credit Union and the way we've helped our members in our community. Secured loans, a lot of people, those are things that they have a title to. So your car loan, your home loan, you have trailer loans, boat loans, anything like that that has a title to it. A lot of these lenders are looking at ways to help the community. We understand if you've got no income, you, it's really hard to pay your bills on time. And we don't want you to default. Well, we are looking for ways to help you. So California Coast, for our members in good standing, we automatically advance due dates for 60 days. And we're going to be looking at other ways to help our members. Reach out to your lenders. Make sure you're letting them know what your situation is. Stay in communication with them is vital because if they don't know that you're having trouble, they're not going to be able to come up with those options to help you. And we have a lot of options that we'll go over a little bit later. So any secure loans you have, reach out to your lender, see what they can do to defer, to skip, to whatever options are available and use that money for something else. Student loans, if you've got any federal loans, they automatically put everything at 0% and have advanced the due date. You don't have anything due until September. So that's a really, really awesome way. There are some companies that you are going to have to reach out to them and ask if they have that service available. Any Perkins loans, you're going to have to reach out to them um, and see what they have. But a lot of the federal loans automatically are at 0%. So again, if I don't have to pay interest and they don't have to make that payment, that's going to help get you through the next couple of months. Um, any credit cards, personal loans, again, stay in contact, reach out. Can they tack those payments on to the end? Can they do interest only where you're just paying $20 instead of $300? So we're looking at all these options for your debts. Look at what you're paying, when it's due, and that you're staying in contact with your creditors and looking for options. Monthly expenses. So we're gonna start with the necessities, right? Groceries, food on the table. We're looking at ways that we can stretch your grocery dollar and make that money last. There's a lot of really great websites that will give you some ideas about using what's in your pantry. So I love all recipes. Um, I will go on there and type in, okay, I've got lentils and I've got ham and I've got, and they'll give me all these different recipes for what I have in my pantry so I don't have to spend as much when I go out to the grocery store. Um, my other one, Poor Girl Eats Well. What a fantastic website. This woman stretches her grocery dollar till it screams. She eats for a week on $38. It's amazing. There's all kinds of websites. Just Google ways to reduce. I even have, I eat all organic, so it's really hard to stretch that dollar, but there's websites, there's coupons, there's things that I get from Sprouts all the time, coupons that I'll get these amazing deals and I'll go shop on those ones. Make sure you make lists, don't stray from the list, look for all the ways that we can make that money last longer. And if you're still having trouble, if you go to foodpantries.org and look in San Diego, there are a lot of places here that are looking for ways to help our members who in our community who are struggling to put food on the table. That is a necessity, you have to eat. But we don't have to eat filet mignon, we don't have to eat steak, we don't have to buy the expensive stuff. We can again make that dollar go work a little bit harder for us. Gasoline, it's kind of a, it's really sad to me that the gas prices are so low right now and we're not driving anywhere. Um, but do fill up your gas tank right now while it's still $2. Or if you know, if you know you're not going to be driving anywhere, don't buy gas right now. Um, look at ways of walking or riding your bike. They want us to be outside getting exercise anyways. Um, maybe look at for ways of consolidating. If you have three friends who need to go to the grocery store, take a list and have one person go so that only one person and kind of rotate that around. So we're looking at just, again, all these different ways of making those expenses less out of your pocket right now so you can preserve that money. Now, there is a handout, periodic expenses. This, for me, is one of the most important sections. There's actually a poll that we want to go ahead. Um, I don't know if I was able to get it on there. You can see it on there. I have a poll that's about have you guys spent over $300 in any periodic category over the past six months? And this is one of those categories that we don't think about very often because it doesn't happen very often. But I just met with a member who has her DMV renewal coming up. They are deferring that a little bit. But if it's $300 or you have something you have to renew and it has to get done, those are some expenses that just look at ways that we can defer, ask if they can skip it, ask if uh, we can change the date, ask 
you know, just looking around at these periodic expenses. And I want you thinking about this. So there is a handout on here that is talking about calculating periodic expenses. So I'm going to pull this up really quick, calculating periodic expenses. Um, and I'm going to share this on the screen with you guys. Hold on one moment. So this is looking at all these different expenses that we have throughout the year that we don't do very often. So house repair and items, maybe you dropped your cell phone and it died and you have to get a new one and you're eyeing that new iPhone that's $1,200. Um, looking at the buying a new computer, if you need to have a computer for work, if I just have internet, my computer, I have to work, I'm working remotely, so I need to have that computer. That's one of those things that you know you're gonna have to buy a new computer um, you know, like, is now the time that you need to buy the new blender, the new blankets, the new pillows, all of these things that we have, buying a new TV, couch, mattress, washer, dryer, refrigerator, those are all parts of owning a home, um, owning your own place, being in your own place, auto repairs, you know, if your car is not going anywhere, we don't need to worry about this right now, but if you have to get new tires, uh, if your brake went out, if you have to pay $600 for wheel bearings and a motor mount, like I did last year, on top of $300 for two tires, on top of $160 for my battery. My car wasn't working without it, so I had to get that fixed. So we're looking at these expenses that are a part of our lives. We're just thinking about them. Um, vacation travel, we can't go anywhere right now. Clothing, shoes, socks, underwear, that kind of fun stuff. Birthdays coming up. Like I have my 50th coming up on June 13th. Um, and I had a plan for a big bash and to spend like $1,000 on a barbecue at the beach. Obviously, I can't do that, so I'm saving $1,000 and I can go on vacation next year. But just thinking about all these things that are coming up that, you know, all these graduations, these are a part of our life, part of our living expenses. Um, haircuts, we're not getting that done right now. We got the COVID hair, COVID cuts, and I'm doing this at home and doing my daughter's and it's very interesting. Um, if you've got pets, kids' activities, concerts, all these things that we're not doing right now. But I do want you kind of thinking about that moving forward and being aware that this is a part of our expenses that we have. So I'm going to go back over to my other screen. Hold on one moment. Okay. So now we've written everything down. We've researched all of our bills. We've researched our income. We've you know, looked at everywhere our money is coming in and everywhere that it's going out. And now we're gonna look at prioritizing. So it's looking at reviewing these bills and again, looking for all those ways that is this necessary? Is there anything else I can do? Do I have to do this right now? Reordering it so that we're putting this in order of the most important to the least important. Roof of your head and food should be the top two and then everything else in order of priority. That's what you're looking. And then when you put this on this plan, so I have another handout that I'm gonna share with you. It's the cash flow worksheet. And all of these are listed on that. If you go look at the list of handouts, you're gonna see that. I'm trying to get it open here. Okay, so this is the cash flow worksheet that we use. So here's the income at the top. Then we're looking at these bills that we have. And these are some of the more common ones that we have. If you go look and do a search online, you'll see a lot of other ideas for things that people pay for. Um, and then down here, the credit card payments. And then down here is a summary. So we go up and we put down the income that you actually have. And then we put in the rent. We put in the groceries. And then everything else in order of priority. What is the most important for you in order to live? right? This is the most important thing that we're looking at is what is most important to survive and get through this. And if you've gone through all those, we're going to re you know, resolve to follow this plan. So I'm going to go back to that and to our webinar. Um, we reviewed, we, we reordered them in order of priority. We're resolving to follow that plan because you're going to potentially call some of your creditors and they are going to try and convince you to pay their bills. It's only $40, right? It's only for, it's only $25 your minimum payment. It's not going to make a big dent, but you know what? That's $25, $40 that can go towards groceries. That's $25, $40 that can go towards the, keeping that roof over your head. So, you know, there are a lot of unscrupulous vendors out there who are going to try and convince you to pay them but keep in mind what is most important, right? Prioritize and you have this list in front of you that is showing I've got to pay, this is the only income I have and my rent and my groceries takes it all. You have no money left over to pay those bills. Don't let them talk you into anything. 
each month you're gonna reevaluate this. You're gonna go back in and follow those same four steps. Review your bills, the income, put them in order of priority, and make sure that you're staying in contact with everybody and keeping that roof over your head and food on your table. So these four R's you're gonna do every single month with the income that you have and resolve to follow that. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about communicating with your creditor. So if you have car loans, if you have home loans, if you've got personal loans, if you've got credit cards, um, if you have these debts, there are again, lots of different options, but when you're calling them, I want you to be ready with all the information that you need. You've gone in and you've looked at all these bills. You know what you're spending in gas, groceries, meals out. You're looking at your debts. You have everything. You're looking at your periodic expense, looking at your monthly expenses, and you've put them all in order. So you have the specific information when you call your creditors and say, look, you know, I have not been able to work for 60 days. Here is my income. These are my expenses right now. I have to pay my rent. I have to pay for food. I don't have any money left over, you know, but I should be getting back to work in 60 days. We've got the notification. You have a repayment plan. I will start, you know, paying you as soon as I possibly can and be honest with what's going on. So this is being ready when you call, have your bills in front of you, have your statements in front of you, have this cash flow plan in front of you so that you have all the information together. You're prepared for that conversation and you're gonna be honest with them. And, and I'm saying this because when we go into talking with our members who are asking for a hardship you know, deferment or a hardship reorganization, a lot of times we I've seen them get denied because someone will come in and say, well, you know, I wasn't able to pay my $100 credit card payment. And then we look at their statements online because we usually ask for a bank statement and we'll see that they paid $100 to get their nails done and they spent $500 on meals out and they went to Disneyland, you know, two months ago. So we are going to look for statements when you apply for a hardship sometimes. So have those statements ready, um, have your income statements or whatever is going on. Like I applied for unemployment, I'm waiting for a response um, and be sure that you are being honest with your creditors. And the, the big thing is staying in communication, right? So if you are not able to pay anything right now, if we say my income is a thousand, my rent is 800, that leaves me $200 for food. Like I have nothing else left over then that's all you can do. Be ready with that statement. Like I cannot afford to make this payment, but I will call you in 30 days and I will let you know if there's any change. And if you tell them that you're going to call in 30 days, call them in 30 days. Set that reminder and make sure that you call because we want to stay in communication. We don't want to default. We want to work with you and not take that loss. So if you are staying in communication with me as a lender, I'm going to be more likely to work with you. I'm going to be more likely to look at the options available so I can help get you through this temporary, it is temporary, this temporary deficiency in the income that we have. Okay, it's not going to be forever. So next thing we're gonna take a look at is what are the options that lenders have? And I want you to be prepared with this information so that you can ask for what's going to help fit your situation the best, right? So we're looking at, these are the different options, skip and pay, interest only, loan modification, debt management, debt settlement, and bankruptcy. Skip a pay is the easiest one. You're just basically deferring your payment like what we did with our members. We skipped two months, just advanced the due date two months usually not a fee for this. You do have to be prepared that interest does continue to accrue on your loan in that deferment stage. So unless it's a student loan, we are still paying that interest that gets accrued on a daily basis, posts on a monthly basis. So you are going to see when you finally make your first payment, a lot of it's gonna to go towards the interest that's due. But this is one of the easiest solutions, the quickest solutions is really easy for us to do and easy for you to ask for. The next one is interest only payment. So if I have a car loan that's $350 and I take a look at my last payment and you know $30 of it went towards interest, I could ask for interest only. If I've got some income coming in and I don't wanna have the interest continue accruing, I can ask for an interest only and we will just 
have you pay that $30 a month for the next two, three months. Uh, we do usually pull credit on this, but we might be, the company might waive that if you ask because of this COVID situation. Um, but that's another more quick, easy thing that you can do with your loans. Now we're going into if you have a longer term issue and you know that your business is closed. I just found out that soup plantation is not going to reopen ever, ever, ever. And it's so sad, but it's worse for the employees that they're not going to have a job to come back to when we reopen. And so now we're looking at modifying. This is a more long term solution for the longer term issues. And this is we can take a car loan that's supposed to be paid off in two years. We can stretch and modify that term out back to 60 months, five years, and that will lower the payment for you. Um, same thing with mortgages. A lot of time they'll work with you and do a modification. So usually anything um, that you have a title to, we can modify it. Even personal loans though, we can do the same thing, stretch that back out. Um, we do pull credit. Sometimes there's a fee. You just have to ask what's going on. The next thing we have on this list, and we're kind of escalating in terms of how it's going to affect you, is debt management. So debt management, one of my companies that I refer members to is Money Management International. And this is if you don't want to make all those phone calls to all of the lenders and you have some income and you can make payments, you can reach out to a debt, uh, debt management company. And what you will do is you will pay them the money for the minimum payment they're going to set up for you. They will contact all of your creditors. They will lower the interest, lower the payment. You'll send your payment to the debt management company and they will send the money out to all the lenders. So this is letting them do all of the phone calls, all the reduction in the interest, all the things that you can do. Again, you have to have income. Um, they're not going to do it if you don't have any money because they're going to go through all this modification of your contract with the creditors and you won't be able to pay still. So you do have to have income with this. This does impact your score because usually it's going to show up on your credit report that you're in a debt management company. You usually can't apply for any loans while you're in the debt management plan. It usually lasts anywhere from three to five years, but your debts are paid. It's done. You're completely debt free and everything is still being taken care of. So that's an option for you too. If you don't want to make all the phone calls to all your creditors. The next worst option for me is the debt settlement. And I, these companies, what they'll tell you is to stop making payments to your creditors. You'll send them the money. And once you're 30, 60, 90 days delinquent, they'll contact the creditor and say, hey, I know this person owes you 5,000. We can do $1,000 and you can settle this and take what you can get. Um, this decimates your credit. You, you're taking a loss and the lender is taking a loss and it's, it's really gonna take you two years to recover from those late payments. So if you have a 700 credit score, you have one 30 day past due, you lose 40 points in your credit score the next month. If you go 60 days past due, it's 100 points in your credit score. This decimates your credit. It takes two years to recover from that. Those late marks stay on for seven years that are going to impact all lending decisions. I don't like the debt settlement companies, um, but they're out there and it is an option that's out there. The last one is bankruptcy. Um, if you have no income and no way and you've exhausted all of the loan options and you just, you're done, there is that bankruptcy. Um, I don't have any options for you. I've been doing this since 2008. I've had maybe four or five members who have had to file bankruptcy um, and none of them had a really good experience. So I don't have a lot of resources for that. I would just say, again, do a search, um, talk to your friends, see if anybody's gone through it and if they can refer someone for you. Um, th there is a fee for the bankruptcy. You do have to go through credit counseling. It will impact you for 10 years, lending decisions. Um, that that bankruptcy mark does not come off for 10 years. And yes, yes, once you've got income after about a year, you can probably get another loan, but it's going to be 22, 29, 30% interest rate. So I, I hear all those commercials say, oh, file bankruptcy, you'll be able to get a loan the next month. Yes, but you're going to be paying 30% for your car. So if you can avoid it, um, try to you know work with your creditors and see if they can help you. But again, if you don't have income, don't don't stress about this. It's it's an option for a reason. So you have that as an option. I moved on to this next one because I know 
if you're struggling financially, thinking about savings, emergency savings is the last thing on your mind. But I feel like this is a really good time to talk about it because if you are feeling stressed by your income and your financial situation, you never want to feel like this again, right? So if we can go in and once we get things coming back and we've got regular income, everything's caught up, bills are paid, and you're back on track, this emergency, having emergency savings, every financial person you ever talk to is going to tell you, you should have at least three to six months. And we said three, it used to be three, but after 2008 recession and after this pandemic situation, this is why you have emergency savings. This is why you set money aside every single month and have, I would say, six months worth of living expenses. And you've written it all down now. So you know what it costs to live, to pay your bills, to eat. You have this number written down from the first step that we did. So we want to have three to six months worth of expenses set aside so that if you have loss of income, you are not in immediate financial distress. And again, this is probably too late for some of you, but once we get things back, I, I want to make sure that we put this out there and stress how important it is to have that savings account. And I'm gonna go over a couple of ways to build that once we've got the income. Setting up a separate account is really easy because for me, I have the money right next to my checking account. It's money to spend, right? So I want to have it completely separate. I still want it in just a regular savings because if I need it, I need to be able to withdraw it without penalty. So I can have a totally separate account at a totally separate institution and just keep putting money aside to every single pay period. Um, setting up an automatic transfer is a really good way of watching that money grow. Even if it's just $10 that you're putting into that account every pay period, just let it keep going. If you do $25 a month, um, you're gonna have that money continue to grow. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Um, until you have what you need in there. Um, if you get a raise every year, so typically people will get a review, you might get a raise, you might get bonuses. If you get a raise, don't change your spending habits, right? I go from $3,000 a month to say $10,000 income a month, and I got a really good raise. I'm not gonna go out and buy a new car, I'm not gonna go out and buy a new house, I'm not gonna go out and put my kids into every single you know, free, um, every single you know soccer camp or uh, cheerleader camp or softball camp or anything like that. I'm going to keep living the way I'm living and keep putting that money into that account, into my uh, emergency savings account until I have six months worth of expenses. And if my in expenses increase because I do buy a house, then I need to increase that emergency savings six months worth of living expenses in an easily accessible savings account. If I lose my job, lose income, something else happens in the future, that I have something that I can pay my bills. The third method, this is one of the things that I came up with that if you get a bonus, so say you get a thousand dollar bonus, I use the thirds method for that. So I'm gonna put a third into my emergency savings, $333. I'm gonna take a third and pay that towards any debt that I may have, car loan, home loan, credit cards, if I still have those. And then I'm gonna take a third of it and go do whatever I want. I'm gonna get that new Fitbit, I'm gonna go get a spa, I'm gonna go get my nails done, I'm gonna go buy that cute sports jacket I've had my eye on. So we're gonna use that with guilt-free spending and that way you're making progress and still getting to enjoy a little bit. So do this anytime you get any extra money. So when you get your taxes, third to savings, third to debt, third, have a good time, do whatever you want. If I sell my washer and dryer for $200, a third, a third, a third. This is a good way of building up that account. Um, so just kind of looking at those ways of building that emergency plan. Okay, so that is all we have. And I hope I, if there's any questions out there, we'd love to answer some questions. Um, I'm gonna go right here. You're gonna see on the page, there's my direct phone number and my email address. So you can call me if you have any questions that you wanna go over more personal information. This is also a free benefit of membership with California Coast Credit Union. If you're a member, I can meet with you one-on-one -on -one and we can go over each of these stages together and I can give you more ideas of how to open up in the handouts. There's ways to reduce expenses. There's some really good websites that you can go in and take a look at reducing you know, any of your, there's websites for, um, 
food budgeting, all these really great ideas. So there's a couple more handouts on there, um, but I have a handout on every single thing. I've been doing this for 11 years. I've, I've got information on every category, income, expense, debts, anything you need. I'm happy to answer those questions and work with you and help get you through this temporary situation. It will get better. All of these changes that we're talking about are not going to be forever. You will get income again. We will get back on our feet. We will recover. All of this is temporary. So just keep that in mind. So any questions about anything we've covered? Any questions by anybody? Just put them in that chat Hi. box. We do have a question, Tara Lynn, uh, from Brandon. He's asking, does skipping a payment, deferring, interest only, et cetera, affect your credit score? If no, no, the interest, so interest only, you're still making your payments on time, right? So that's that's 35% of my score, then you're still making a payment, They're, you're, you're paying the minimum payment requirement, that's what we care about, did you make your payment on time? Skipping the payments, if you defer and you push, so if it was due March 20th, and I, as a lender, go in and say, your next payment isn't due until August 20th. You don't have a payment due. We've uh, amended that contract with us, and that's not going to affect your credit. Um, so those options typically are not going to hurt you. Debt management can. Debt settlement, absolutely. And bankruptcy, absolutely. But those two top ones are not going to impact you. I will right. say one thing before we go any further is, uh, if you go to annualcreditreport.com, you are now able to get a free copy of your reports every seven days. So they've changed it where it used to be you got one every 12 months for free. Um, now through uh, July of next year, July of next year, um, you actually get a free copy every seven days. So you can monitor and see what's going on with your credit. I also like going to um, creditkarma.com that gives you two of the credit bureaus with some estimated scores. Experian.com gives you a free report every 30 days and credit.com will give you an estimated experience score every 30 days. So between all those websites, you should be able to stay on top of what's going on with your credit. All right, and then we had uh, Felicia was asking, what about adjusting your taxes when it comes to your income? Say that one more time. What about adjusting your taxes? So like you're with your uh, withheld uh, tax rate. Yeah, I highly recommend. So I don't want you to owe, but if you do this for just a couple of months, it shouldn't make a huge impact in the taxes that you owe next year. Um, and if you're getting back more than a thousand dollars in taxes, now is a really good time to kind of file exempt and not have any taxes withheld over the next couple of months if you have an income because i have like 261 dollars i think withheld out of every single pay period so if i am getting money back or if i just make that you know for two months i go exempt and not have any money withheld i get that money now which i can then use to pay my rent pay food and, and make sure that i'm staying on top of everything so i do look at that I, again i don't want you to owe you know thousands and thousands if you already owe thousands and you file exempt you're going to end up owing more so i do recommend you talk to a tax advisor go online talk to your hr department and make sure that you're making those adjustments and it's not going to put you in more trouble later on all right great uh, also, does CalCoast have a program to assess, uh, assist members individually right now? That's me. I'm a uh, financial fitness coach, and this is a free benefit of membership with the credit union. So if you have an account with us and just takes $5 uh, fee and $25 deposit into a savings account, $25 to join, uh, to open a checking account, um, it's a completely free service. So I sit down with you and we go over every single step that we've talked about today. I do one-on-one -on -one and I can help you provide all the tips, all the tools, all the resources, all the handouts of how to deal with each of these steps. So this is completely free. Whether you meet with me three times or 30 times, we don't charge for this. I've been doing this, at, we've been doing this at CalCo since 2008. We were looking at how we could help our members get through that recession. And then we just kept doing it because people needed to recover after the recession. And now we have this, um, and we're going to keep looking for ways to help our members. And this is a fantastic service. I love that we help our members like this get through crisis. 
All right. Uh, what about, is it a good time to shop around for better credit card rates? If you have income, then there aren't, a, there, huh, it's hard. We have a great 2.88% um, offer and it's zero balance transfer fee. So it's a really good offer that we have. You have to have income. So this is one of those things that if you don't have income, we don't we don't use unemployment income because that's going to end before the credit card ends typically. So we don't use unemployment income. But if you've got a job and you've got a good credit score, again, you can talk to me about this. This is something thing I do is a one-on-one -on -one review of credit reports and we can determine what is going to be the best solution to the problem that you have. And we'll look at all these different options if you can get it to 0% or you can get a 2.88% and stop paying 26.99%, that's going to make your dollar work harder. You're going to pay that debt off faster. So you're always looking at every option that you can to make your dollar work harder for you. So that's what we're looking at. So if you can, I use uh, nerdwallet.com to compare credit card offers. I also like comparecards.com. Those are two websites that I refer members to to look at what credit card is going to best fit your needs, whether you're looking for travel, you're looking for cash back, you're looking for balance transfer offers. If you go to both those websites, they update every month and you'll be able to get the most recent offers that are out there. Okay. Um, then we have a savings question. How many saving account, savings accounts or categories of saving do you have? Uh, Seven. I saw the emergency. <laughs> I have, I <laughs> I have saw the savings. I have my share 02, which is titled auto savings. I have my share 03, which is my vacation savings. Those are my two important ones. I have my share 04, which I don't know exactly which one they are, but I have seven. I have a health and beauty. So this is my um, supplements, my, I play volleyball. So um, I have, uh, when I go to my volleyball tournaments, I'm putting money aside so I can pay for the volleyball tournaments. I have an annual fees savings account and I do $100 a paycheck going into that account because I've got my Costco, my Amazon Prime, my DMV renewal, my auto insurance. Um, I have a timeshare that I pay once a year. So I have all these, my PO box, all these things that I have. So I have an annual fee savings. I have a couple others, but I have seven different ones and every single pay period, I have an automatic transfer going into that account. My auto repairs has $42 a paycheck. I get paid bi-weekly um, so that I'm putting this money aside every single pay period so that when I have a $600 expense and need to buy tires or whatever, I just pull the money out of my auto savings. That money has a purpose. That's what it's for. I don't pull money out of the account unless I'm buying a battery windshield wipers. That's what that money is for. So that's one of the cool things about Cal Coast is that we can set up those different accounts underneath your same umbrella account, 010203, and title them however you want so that you know what that money is for. It's a great way of planning ahead for those periodics. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we also had a question um, that says, um, uh, sorry, I'm looking for it here. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Still here. <laughs> um, oh, shoot, I lost it now, but it was a question that basically said, uh, I am a CalCoast member and I have an auto loan through you and the last couple of months has shown that I have a zero dollar payment due. And why is that? As in a way for us to help our members, California Coast automatically advanced the due dates. So at the end of the month, we advanced the due date 30 days so that you did not have a payment that was due for that month. We were, if you want to make that payment and you have enough income and you're fine with that, just you'll have to manually make that payment. But we were looking at ways to help our members and we knew that this is impacting pretty much everybody in, in our community. So we were looking for ways to help our members and that was one thing they did. They just advanced the due dates. Um, so you did not have a payment due and you could use that money to get you through and pay the rent and pay for food, which is the necessities. We're looking at ways to help. And that's what one of the ways that we came up with is to advance all of the due dates. Um, mortgages, we did 90 days automatically. I love our credit union. I feel like we have just 
bend over backwards to do whatever we can, can to help our members. And that was one of the ways that we came up with. All right. Uh, credit score question. Uh, the sites you mentioned to check your FACO score, are they all free? And how often can you check yes. it right now? Yes, absolutely. You should not ever pay for your report. If you are paying for your report or paying for a score, stop. That is one of those things that you can suspend and stop because those free websites, you it's not a hard hit. It doesn't impact your score. It's totally free to do it. If they're asking you for a credit card, you're in the wrong place to go back because most of them do offer a pay service where you're getting monitored and all that fun stuff. Um, but you don't have to. Like I have not paid for a credit report in 10 years. There's no fee, no credit card required. It's updated and you get you get all those great resources of handouts and articles and things that can help you um, monitor that credit and make sure that things stay on track. Great question. All right, we have a lot, lots of questions. Uh, so we'll try and get to all these questions now, but if we don't, then we will definitely follow up with each person uh, individually to answer your question. Uh, so let's see. Uh, do I, so I'm a calculus member. I was in California, but now I'm in Minnesota. Do I still get the free financial advisor help or do I have to pay? Absolutely. I actually do everything over the phone. I use GoToMeeting. There's a webcam if you want to see who you're talking to, but I use GoToMeeting on my computer. I share my screen. I teach you all the tools and we talk over the phone. It's absolutely, it's one of the reasons why we did this GoToMeeting over the phone is so I could help more of our members and I don't have to drive to Murrieta. I live in Rancho San Diego and it was a three hour round trip drive to get up to those branches. So we were looking at, okay, well, let's do this and I can reach all of our members no matter where you are. Um, once a member, always a member and you are absolutely eligible no matter where you live. So yes, take advantage, please. This is fun. This is the fun part. I like all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as far as debt settlement, can we negotiate on our own or do you have to use a company? You absolutely can uh, do the debt settlement. So this is where um, if you have a debt and um, say you owe $4,000 and you just, you just want to get it done and stop paying it back, you can definitely negotiate. Um, just be aware. So with the debt settlement, if you contact them and you negotiate a lower payment and a lower interest rate, most of those companies do have that available. Um, and they're going to put that on there that you're in. They might report that, that you're in a debt settlement plan. I just worked with someone who it's, she was in three different debt settlement programs with three different credit card companies. And they were just reporting the minimum payment, the $25 on 10% interest that was $40 at 26.99%. Um, two of the bigger bank institutions that I just had a member who was paying $700 a month at 17% on a credit card with a big bank. She negotiated with them, they came back and they offered $400 a month at 7%. So you absolutely can negotiate with each individual creditor that you have. And if you get into a, a debt settlement where, uh, not a debt management where you're paying a lower interest, that usually is okay for your credit if they're just reporting that monthly payment per the modifications they've agreed to. So the debt, management is something that you can negotiate with each one and debt settlement you can too debt settlement is going to impact your score negatively because that that lender is taking a loss and the other thing you have to be prepared for if you settle and say you owed them five thousand and they took a thousand dollars as a settlement and they just forgave the other four thousand um, dollars and there is a law that says they have to report that $4,000 in forgiven debt to the IRS and it will be added to your gross annual income for that year and you will end up paying taxes based on whatever your tax bracket is. So if that forgiven debt is higher than 600, so if you owe a thousand and they take 600 as a settlement, it's only $400, um, you're not going to be reported to the IRS. You do still have to report that on your taxes, but it won't be reported to the IRS but anything over $600 will get reported, will get added to your income on any forgiven debt higher than $600. So just be prepared. If you decide to contact your creditors yourself, be prepared with that, okay? 
Okay, and then I have a three-part question for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> for the uh, extra savings accounts, is there a charge to have them? How do you open them? And what percentage do you recommend putting in? Um, there is no fee for each of the individual accounts. Um, you can just call in. You can go online, actually, if you have an account with us. You can go open a separate savings account. If you want to title it differently, um, you can either call in. And, or you could actually go in and, adjust and edit the title to that account so it shows up online. Um, I, it depends on what, what your needs are. So for me, for my auto expense, it used to, I was doing $1,000 a year, so $42 a paycheck. I recently increased that because I have an older car and it's starting to fall apart. So I had to increase what I had going into that account. I'm doing $1,200 a year now. Um, and for me, vacation was a really big one. So some people do $1,000 a year. I'm doing like $3,000 a year because I want to go on a really big vacation in about two years. I'm putting money aside every paycheck. Uh, so it really depends on your needs. Some people are closed horses and want $2,000 a year. Some people don't buy anything in you know 10 years and they don't need as much going into that account. So when you look at the calculating periodic expenses, you're going to look at your needs and adjust what's going into each of those individual accounts based on what you want to achieve. So that's, it's, you can put as much or as little in there as you want. We just ask you to open it. It takes $25 to open it, and then you can put as much or as little in there as you want. I used to have a separate DMV renewal, and I was doing $8 a paycheck. I moved that into my annual fee one, so I'm doing $100 into that one. But I used to have a separate account with that, and um, it just really depends on what your needs are. Okay, so it looks like we are uh, at the end of our session today. There are more questions, and uh, Carolyn and I will ensure that we answer those for you. We'll follow up with each one of you individually. Uh, the presentation today is going to be emailed to you. Also, uh, the PowerPoint and the handouts, we can send those as well. You can just uh, shoot an email to Carolyn. Her email address is in the chat box. And again, we want to thank you for joining us today. Carolyn, your final thoughts. I just want to let all of you know that we're here for you. Um, we're all in this together. It is temporary. I just want to keep saying that, that any of the adjustments that we make is temporary. Um, and we are all in this together. So let's work together. We'll make it through the other side. We will recover. Things will be great. It'll be fine. Um, but we're here for you if you need us. So thank you for taking time out of your day to attend. Um, there is an evaluation on in the handouts. If you guys wouldn't mind taking time to fill that out for us and letting us know what you liked about this, any suggestions for improvements, um, any recommendations for other topics. We'd love to get your feedback um, on our webinars. And thank you very much for attending today. Thank you.